Ayo langsung. Audible. Am I audible to you? <clears throat> so anybody have any question in AWS side? Anybody? All of you completed AWS lab. What happened to all of you? Can I get few response? Have you completed AWS lab or how is it? Completed AWS lab. Okay. Any issue? Anything? Uh, everything was good. Uh, I did have a little bit of issues, but uh, then I'll follow up the video. It's just a little bit of mistakes uh, that we make. Uh, I just had to follow step by step just to make it uh, complete. Uh, so for instance, uh, I was setting up the image and then I forgot uh, it was just uh, not saving the same uh, region. So I couldn't okay. access it and making it public was the second mistake. So just small things that I don't remember. Oh. Uh, that is, <clears throat> have we completed? Tell to do. Yeah, still I have to do the pro uh, AWS classes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so today we are going to start with the MCV. So let me give you the idea about MCV, then we'll see how to set up it. So <clears throat> MCV is a configuration management tool. Okay. So to understand what is configuration management tool, so you have to understand the point. Uh, like whenever you are <clears throat> buying a new laptop or you are buying a new mobile phone okay so it's not like first time you are powering on your mobile phone it is getting started everything is well and set up i think you have to set it up you have to enter your email address you have to enter your wi-fi password you have to give the recovery account email address everything then after following all the instructions like setting the time zones everything then your mobile phone home screen comes okay Similarly, in the laptop also, first we set up entire thing, we set the password, we set the administrator account, everything. Then only our windows turn on at the first time. Okay. So these all things are known as the configuration management tool. Even if you are installing any software, so in Windows, they always ask you that at which location you want to save the file. Okay. Or like, do you want to create a shortcut of that software on your desktop? So these are all things they ask. These all things come under the configuration management. So previously, uh, before Ansible was in the market, okay, there was a system admin in a company who was taking care of all the part. Like if somebody is telling them to install the software, system admin was doing, system admin was logging to the machine, they are installing that package. Okay, somebody want to update the Linux, somebody want to change the Linux version, everything. So system admin was doing manually. Similarly, there is some problem with network. Again, system admin is going to configure the networking part also. So all these things were done by the system admin, but manually, okay. So when he was doing the manually, and if you are taking that in a corporate world, uh, there is a company in that hundreds of EC2 instances are running, okay. 
and suddenly we have to install four to five software on all the hundred must okay so for a person it will be really difficult to log into one by one each machine okay then install that five software then again jump back to the another system like that so he have to do the to the hundred times okay and he will be keep waiting for this so for this ansible comes in the picture okay ansible say <coughs> you can write you <coughs> a yml script something okay and you can tell me i am going to on your behalf okay and i will be installing the software packages on all the hundred machines. you don't have to go to the manual that is the benefit of the ansible similarly there is a one more tool related to the ansible that is the ansible tower okay this is a graphical user interface tool like currently if i will tell you that this is the ews cloud okay in this, if I want to launch the instance, everybody will say that you have to click on this launch instance and you will be launched the instance, right? But do you remember I said you one more way to launch the EC2 instance? Anybody remember? Last to last topic that you can launch a EC2 instance here using some different method. Do you remember anybody? I said you in a different way to launch EC2 instance. One way was to click on this launch instance and launch the instance. Other way. Yeah, AWS CLI we are talking about here. Okay. So we written the commands to launch the instance. So that was the CLI method. Okay. So similarly, currently, whatever the Ansible we are going to learn. Okay. That Ansible is the CLI one. Okay. That means we'll be writing the command, we'll be doing it. But Ansible also have a GUI tool, graphical user interface tool. That tool name is Ansible Tower. Again, it is comes with the corporate license. To use the Ansible Tower, you have to pay for it. Okay, to the Red Hat company. But again, uh, they are doing the exact same thing, whatever you are able to do it from the command line. But if you want to use their dashboard service, like then you have to pay for that Ansible tower. Okay. But we are going to learn the normally Ansible. Now, again, Ansible is just a configuration tool, as I said, okay, by which you can install packages or you can configure packages, you can copy the files, everything to hundreds of servers at a time. Okay. You don't have to worry about going login inside that machine manually one by one okay every just you have to enter the ip address and the password of each machine and civil will go and civil will log into that machine they will configure everything and and civil is available for all linux based system rhel red hat enterprise linux debian like ubuntu centos or Eka linux mostly for all of the linux present okay everywhere you can install the and civil and you can work on it and even you can use this tool locally also like locally you have two to three laptop in your home okay all are running on the linux machine and then this local laptop also you can configure it similarly if there are some ec2 instances running on cloud okay that also you can configure it using the ansible okay so ansible can work on both on premise and the cloud and if you say in a single word so it basically turns your code whatever you write the code into the infrastructure as a code Okay, like you will tell them that I want to set up a EC2 instance on the AWS cloud. That also <laughs> Ansible can do. Okay. But Ansible does not mean for the infrastructure as a code. They are designed to do the configuration related work only for infrastructure. Uh, as a code, there is a tool called Terraform that also will be going to learn later. Okay, but it doesn't like with the ansible you cannot do the infrastructure also you can do it you can launch the ec2 instance you can connect to the ec2 instance everything you can do with the ansible also. now how ansible works so to understand this part that how ansible works you have to understand that ansible follow a master slave architecture okay which there will be a master and other nodes will be acting as a slave so what master do so master will tell the information that i have to install a package called firefox okay 
So Ansible will basically push that information to the node one, node two, node three. Okay, these all are basically acting as a slave. Okay, and once Ansible master will tell that you have to install the Firefox. So at this machine, Ansible master will run a command called yum install Firefox. Okay, and once that software will install, again this Ansible server or basically the Ansible master will run the yum install Firefox in the second machine. And like this way, it will keep going for the hundreds of machines, whatever the list you give to them. Okay. So like this way, your in every node or every slave, your Firefox software is getting installed. But how Ansible are able to do it? Okay. So to understand, see if I want to install Firefox in this machine, what is the command I have to write? I have to write yum install Firefox. That is the first thing you have to understand. Once you write the yum install Firefox, so do you remember that? Just give me a So we are at the point that how Ansible is going to perform this work. So um, let me write it in the notebook. So basically what is our final goal? To install the Firefox in the node one. Node one is basically the slave one. You have to hit the command, you have installed Firefox. So anybody remember who can run the command as yum? Who can run the yum command, do you remember? Like which user can run the yum command? In your machine, you I said you the right in the Linux lecture. There are two types of the command. One located in the bin directory. One is in the S bin directory. So the commands which are located in S bin directory can run only by which user? Anybody? The root user. Yeah, so root users. Just things you have to keep in mind that in node one, if you want to install the Firefox, for that command is yum install Firefox, that can only be run by the root user. Or basically the user who have the root power. Okay, like that also you can say root user or root power is. So now this thing is clear. So our final goal is to run this command. Okay, on this machine, node one, node two, like that way. Now, how this This is okay. now Ansible have to run this. So to Ansible, this Ansible master, how they will be able to run this yum install Firefox command in this machine? Okay. So like if you want to use the Putty software, the Putty software was helping you by how? So your EC2 instances was running on AWS cloud. Putty was making sure that you will be able to communicate okay to that EC2 instances using the SSS protocol. But he's using SSH protocol, basically the port 22, okay, port 22 to connect to the EC2 instance. Okay. EC2 instance. So this was the instance for the party software. Similarly, and civil server, basically the master node also uses the protocol, okay, also uses the protocol, and the protocol name is here SSH itself, okay. So master will go like this, way. master, they will use the SSH. Okay, port 22, and they will communicate okay to the node one. Okay. So you anybody remember when we are making sure that party should be connected to our EC2 instance? What was the information we are providing to party? You remember anybody? Like what are the things you fill in the party software so it connects to the EC2 instance? We are connecting to uh, what's that SSL. Not there are some data we copied from the dashboard side and we paste it now in party. Yes. 
So what are these things? Anybody? First user and IP address. Username, then we hit the IP address. And then one more thing, we fill. Oh. The, the security credential set, PPK file. Yes, PPK. PPK file, basically the security code. Okay, security key you can. So this thing are the requirement. Okay, to connect, party can be connected to this. So if anyone want to use SSH protocol to connect any machine, they will require at least username. They will require IP address and you can say PPK file or you can say a password. Okay, these things they will require. Similarly, this master node and civil server want to connect to this node one using SSH protocol. Similarly, they will also require what thing? First, they will require the username. In this, we'll be using the by default username as Ansible only. Okay. So we don't require any other username. We'll keep the Ansible username for every node one, like that node one also have the Ansible username, node two also Ansible, node three also Ansible. Okay, so we can quickly connect to this. So our username will be the fixed, that will be the Ansible username. And we will require IP address of all the three machines. Okay. So either you can use public IP or private IP because even our master node is running in the AWS cloud itself. Okay. So we'll be using the private IP only. Okay. Because private IP will be not going to change. But you can use public IP also. That will be also fine. But every time you have to change the public IP once your EC2 instances are getting restarted. Okay. After this, we'll require a password also. Okay. Because once you are giving the username, IP address, so definitely this node one is going to ask for the password. That what is the password? Do you remember my password? And if you'll give the correct password, then only they will be going to make sure that you can log in it and you can run some prompts. Okay. And even once we given the password, okay, and they connected to the username as a Ansible. So this Ansible is a guest user, right? So they cannot run the command yum install Firefox. Why so? Anybody can tell me. That as an Ansible user, you cannot run the YAM install Firefox. Now only we discuss right in the starting point that to run the YAM install Firefox, you should have either the root user or you should have the root based power. So what we have to do is one more extra work that this Ansible user, which is created in this node one, node two, node three, we have to give them some extra power. Basically the pseudo power we can say, or we say it as a root power. Okay, so pseudo power, then only they will be able to run this. Code. So see what are the steps we said just try to focus i said you that if i want that in the node one node one is basically the slave one okay in this i want to run this command you have installed firefox so this command we got to know that can only be run by the root user or root power user okay this is the first thing second thing we get to know that if we are using the party software connect to the ec2 instance we have to always use the ssh protocol and in the party software, we always fill username, IP address, PPK, security. Okay. Similarly, when Ansible master will go to the node one, this is the node one or slave one. So they are also going to use the SSS protocol. And we know in the SSS protocol, username is the important thing, IP address is the important thing, and password is the important thing. If anything is missing, our machine is not able to communicate. And second thing, to run the yum install Firefox, okay, this NCUR user should have the pseudo power. Okay, then only they can run this command. So is this part clear? Everybody able to understand this part? What I discussed till now? Yes. Anybody? Okay. See, NCUR is a little bit complex topic, but just try to focus. Okay, how I am giving you the scenario, you'll be able to understand in so easy manner. You don't have to worry about it. The benefits. So, benefits of the NCUR is if I'll ask you, that you have a tool without internet connectivity. Okay, there is no internet connectivity. Okay, uh, now you have to share a file from one mobile phone to another mobile phone. What are the way you are going to follow? Anybody? You have to send one file from one mobile phone to another mobile phone without internet. You cannot use email, you cannot use Google Drive, nothing like that. Okay, all the internet related activity is prohibited. But you have to share the files. Any option? All of you know. Definitely you have tried. That's why I'm asking. Can I get some response? You can keep it in chat also. Okay, one of the options. Any other option other than Bluetooth? Anybody? 
share it with yeah share it like application which uses the wi-fi basically to see the data okay so these two things are there but if i will tell you that my other mobile phone don't have the bluetooth or wi-fi only one mobile phone have the bluetooth or wi-fi will you be able to share this other mobile phone is missing with the bluetooth and wi-fi okay and one mobile phone have both the things bluetooth also wi-fi also in this case will you be able to share it only cable Cable option. Yeah, only the cable option like that way. Even that cable is not able to connect, you cannot share it. So basically, both the machines should support exact same thing. Like if you are using the Bluetooth protocol, so first machine also have the Bluetooth option, second machine also have the Bluetooth. Similarly, if you are using share it like application, so share it should be installed in both the mobile phone. It is not like in one mobile phone you install the share it, you can share the data. No, in both the mobile phone it should be there. But in case of the Ansible, they say that you don't have to install Ansible in this Node 1, Node 2, Node 3. Why? Because this Node 1, Node 2, Node 3 don't require Ansible. Because this Ansible master is going to Node 1, Node 2 using the SSH protocol. And all the Linux machine already have the SSH. Okay. So you don't have to manually install Ansible here. Ansible should only be installed in the master node. That's all. So that is the first benefit. And that's why we say that Ansible is a agentless. Okay, why is it less? Because you don't have to install Ansible in all your slave machine. If 100 of EC2 instances are there, so we don't have to manually install the Ansible in all the 100 machines. But in case of the share it application, I said you that if you are sharing the files from one mobile phone to another mobile phone, you have to share, install uh, share it application to all the 100 mobile phone, okay, in a single phone. But Ansible don't ask about this. Okay, they say that, okay, as a share it application, take an example, they are using the Wi-Fi protocol only to share the data. So if share it, it will say that your mobile phone already contains the Wi-Fi. So I don't want that you should install the share it definitely, then only I will be able to share the data. No. If your mobile phone have Wi-Fi, I can share it. But that option is not provided by the share it, but Ansible do it. So you have to install Ansible only in the, in the master, not in the node one, node two, node three. This thing you can answer keep in mind. Now, Ansible mostly uses YAML language. It is just full form is yet another markup language. It is human readable, very easy language. Uh, you don't have to remember any programming thing or something. Okay. Just it is like a key pair concept. You will be writing a key and then you will be writing a value associated. That's all. Okay. And Ansible is as endless. That also I said Ansible need not to be installed in node side. And it works directly through the SSH protocol. And Ansible use always SSS protocol to communicate with the node one, node two, node three like that. Now for our practical, how we are going to do to understand the Ansible. So we'll be launching one EC2 instance, okay, with the name Ansible server and other EC2 instance will be launching uh, with the name node one and node. Okay. And in this Ansible server, I will be installing the Ansible software, everything. And in this node one and node two, we'll be not configuring the Ansible. Okay, we will not hit the command game install Ansible like that. And from this machine, I will try to install software. I will try to copy file from both the machine in a single go. Okay, so these all setups will be there. So basically, at last, we will require three EC2 instances in same reason. Okay, and try to give it in same availability zone also. Then also, it will be perfectly fine. Or even in different availability zone, it will be no any problem because at last, everything will be in a single EPC. So let's come to the lab. Uh, let me show you. Just let me show you. The first thing you have to do is you have to launch the three Linux EC2 instance, okay. one for Ansible server and remaining two for nodes. And see, setting up the Ansible is the most complex thing. Okay, we have to do so many things here to set up the perfect setup for the Ansible. Okay, so just try to understand. Uh, these all are the EC2 instances from my previous classes. So just give me a second. Okay, so let me quickly launch three more. Simply click on launch instance. Give the number of instance as three. We require three instance. Uh, give the name as Ansible. 
and use Amazon Linux only, G2 Micro only, GPAD you can select. security group and here make sure it should edit the allow http traffic okay these things you have to keep in mind ssh allow http traffic and that's all simply you have to give the name amazon linux g2.micro key pair security group allow http traffic make sure number of instances is three okay and click on launch instance three instances is going to launch Now, once this three machine are launching, you can give the name like this, Ansible. First machine, give the name as Ansible Master. Okay. Uh, second machine, give the name as Ansible Node 1. Third machine, give the name as Ansible Node 2. So, first machine will be acting as a master, other machine will be acting as a slave. And these three machines are ready. Okay, and both all three are running in one end. Okay. Now, what you have to do is you have to click on this Ansible master and you have to connect to this machine. Okay, the first thing you have to do is you have to connect to the master machine. But if you follow this lab, okay, I said that you have to log into the EC2 instance, launch with the attached HTTP port. Okay, make sure that port HTTP is active. Okay. Once that is launched, you'll be able to see this three screen Ansible server, node one, node two. Now, what you have to do is uh, you have to log in. Okay, using the party software. Like the first machine will be logging like this way. So party. And this is our Ansible master machine. This is our public IP. So let me quickly do it. So we log into the master machine. Okay. Similarly, you will open one more. Yeah. Uh, quick question. Have you generated the new uh, PPK for this EC2? You can use your previous key also. There is no any okay. okay. You can use any. Just you have to attach the same key in both the way. Okay. Whatever you are attaching here and whatever you are connected to. Okay. Now, similarly, if you will follow this. Once you connect it to the master, similarly, you connect to this node one also and node two also and make the background color like this way, orange and green. Okay. So you'll be able to differentiate that this is a node two, this is the node one. Okay. And whenever you are seeing this screenshot in the white background, always think this is a master machine. Whenever you are seeing the screenshot in the orange color, always understand that this is the node one. And whenever you are seeing it in the green color, always understand that this is the node two. Okay. Because I don't want to confuse. That's why every time I use the different, different screenshot. Like this, every screenshot is coming in the white color. Okay, that means these all commands we are running in the master machine. Okay, similarly, if we'll come down and you will see that, see this is screenshot, whatever you are seeing. This is coming in the orange color. That means you have to run this command user add and see well password and see well everything you have in the node one. Similarly, this in the node, like this way you have to understand. Again, this is white. So you have to run this in the master machine. Okay, so like this way, you can keep understanding these all points. And let's come. We log into the master. Similarly, you have to log into the node one also and node two also. Okay. Uh, log into the node one and node two will come to the later part uh, because the first thing we have to uh, run all the commands in the master only. So basically, first I'm completing that, then I will again connect to the node one. And so, in the master, like you have to download the package like this. Everything in the in which machine you have to do in the Ansible server machine. Ansible server is nothing, just the master. Okay. So basically you have to copy this command. Okay, this command will help you to get the extra package for enterprise Linux, okay, which will be providing you the Ansible software. So simply first you have to always become the root user. They are asking for yum update command. So first do it.
Now, once you've done the YAML, so you have to simply copy paste the command wget http1. But see, this is error because when I copy it, so everything is not copied in a single go. Okay, you'll see that up to not dot no arc is only copied. You have to give the RPM also because it is copied in two different lines. You see, it is coming in two different lines. It should be in a single line. Okay. So just copy this dot not dot RPM, press it. It will download a software. If I do all this, a software is downloaded. Triple release, that is seven dot this is the software basically which is going to provide us the Ansible software everything. Once you've done that, simply have to use the command yum install apple release. Install. Do. Press enter. It is going to install the software. Okay. Once this software is installed, what is your next call? You have to install some software. Okay, that is going to help you to set up Ansible. So see, Git, we are doing it just for our purpose. It is not necessary, so do the Git. Uh, okay. uh, Python is required. Python label is required. Python pip is required. Why? Because <laughs> Ansible is written in the Python programming language. Okay, whoever written this Ansible software, they written it in the Python programming language. That's why without Python, you cannot run the Ansible. Second thing, uh, everything is related to the SSH security part. So we'll require open SSL also. Then only we can set up all the security related information on top of the SSS protocol. So this is also required. So simply you have to copy all this command okay, and paste it as it is in the master machine. Everything we are doing in the master. How you can verify? Just make sure a screenshot you are seeing it in the white background. That means everything is in the master. This is screenshot also in the white color. So it is in the master. Hit it. Okay, so they are installing everything. And Sibyl also they are getting installed. Python they also install. Okay, now Open SSL is also installed. Now let's do it. Well, this is installation is done of this software. Now what you have to do, you have to verify whether Ansible is successfully installed or not. So to verify whether Ansible is installed or not, simply you have to hit the command Ansible hyphen hyphen. We are getting some output. That means your Ansible is successfully installed. They are saying that Ansible is this version they are using. Your configuration file of Ansible at this location. Okay. And currently Ansible is using this version of Python. So they are providing us some information. That means Ansible is successfully installed. Once you get the idea that Ansible is successfully installed, again, what you have to do? You have to update the private type. Private type. I said you, right? There are some information that will require. What information will require? You will require username, you will require IP address, you will require a security key like that. Okay, so we are first writing the IP address. Okay, what we have to do is IP address of node one and in the host file of the Ansible server. Okay, so that it will know which node have to configure. Because we have to tell to the Ansible that Ansible, these are the IP address of our node one, node two, node three, node four. Okay, and whenever I will tell you that you have to install some software or something, you have to go to that machine only and you have to do it. So to do it, again, you have to do it in the Ansible server only, admin master. Again, you can verify the screenshot. So first open this repository. Okay, this is a file location. Uh, just clear it. Yeah. Slash etc. Slash Ansible. Slash host. Okay, this is a file in which you have to uh, basically write the information regarding the node 1 and node 2 IP. Press enter. Uh, press I for insert and come down. I think some of you will be not able to see it. Uh, are you able to see it? If you don't see it, just see this screen. So I think this will be clearly visible. Yeah, you will look. Okay. Able to see? Yes. Okay. okay. So like this way, you have to go ex1 is there and a group host. Okay. After this, you have to write it or even before this also, you can write it. Okay. But just you have to simply write like this uh, ex1. Okay. And here, see, if you'll see here, the example is web server alpha example like this way, they also write it. Okay. So similarly, we are creating here a group. Okay. Like I'm creating a group with the name demo node. Why we are keeping this demo node that I will tell you later. But just think like 
currently demo node just think like this is our company name okay you know it's all our ec2 instances everything we are listing it and i have to read list the ip address okay which ip address we have to list it node one node one private ip address is this one i'll simply copy this okay, and i will paste it and i will do the comment also for our understanding that this is the node one private address Similarly, we have to copy the node 2 also. Similarly, if there are 100 machines, you have to copy the 100 IP address here. Okay, these things you have to do. There is no shortcut for this. Okay, you have to give this. Hashtag node 2 private IP. Okay, so these two private IP we retain. Similarly, if there are 100 machines, we can add more private IP also. But this private IP is important. Okay. Similarly, once you retain the private IP, what you have to do? Simply save this file. That's it. This configuration is also done. So I added this and we added this private IP of node one. Now you've done that, you have to open the configuration file of the Ansible. Again, everything till now we are doing it in the master node only. Okay. So you have to open this file slash etc slash ansible slash ansible dot so Open this bi slash etc in slash ansible directory. And here, rather than host file, you have to go to the ansible.cfg file. Press enter. In this, there are something that you have to do. The first thing you have to uncomment, okay, this sudo user one. You have to uncomment this line. This line was uncommented, sudo user is equal to do. This I uncommented it. Then there is one more line, uncomment inventory one. Okay, so if you come in a starting itself, this is the inventory, you have to uncomment. Why we are doing it? So the first thing is the inventory. And this is the location slash etc slash sensible slash host. And this is the location where our IP address is listed. Okay. I just written the IP address in this location. Itself. That's why we uncomment this. Pseudo user is equal to root. We are uncommenting it because you know we are doing something in these machines. Okay. So we should require some pseudo power. Okay. Basically the root power. Then only we can do anything. That's why pseudo user also we are writing it as a root. And that's all you have to uncomment this to them. One is the inventory, one is the pseudo user. Simply uncomment it. You can see the screenshot here also. Inventory and pseudo user. Previously, hatch symbol were there. Simply press I and remove this hatch symbol. So it will be automatically uncommented. Once it will be uncommented, what you have to do is you have to save this. That's all. This is also saved. So basically, two words is completed. Okay, so up to sixth step, everything is completed. Now we are jumping to the seventh step. Seven step it is saying that we'll create a user with the name Ansible because we should not use the root user in the production environment. Okay. So currently I am logging as a root user okay, in the master. But what I want is I want to create a new user with the name Ansible. Okay. And I will say that whatever the Ansible related software you are going to use, okay, do it as an Ansible user, not as the root user. Because if my come in my company there are five employees, I cannot share the root credential of every machine uh, to all the five employees, right? Because that will be not so much secure. So we'll be creating a username with the name Ansible. I'll be setting some password and then I will give it to that person. So whoever will be working on the Ansible as a DevOps engineer, okay, they will be using that user only rather than root user. So the first thing you have to do is you have to create a user. So to create a user. You have to simply use the command user add, give the username and see. Again, this thing is also I'm doing in the master only. Okay. Press enter. So Ansible user is created. Okay. How you can set the password for that? You have to simply say password Ansible. Okay. And whatever the password you want to set it for the Ansible user, you can simply write it here. Give some simple password so you cannot forget it because you will be requiring this password many times. And that's all. I saved my password. Okay. Now my password is saved. My user is created. Now what I will do? I will share to the DevOps engineer who will be used working as a Ansible engineer. Okay. And I will tell them that this is your the username. This is the password. Now you can log into this machine with this username only. You don't have to log in as a root user or so. Let me exit it uh, from the root user. Now again I become the EC2 user. Every time, whenever we log into our EC2 instances, we log in as an EC2 user. And then to become the root user, we always use the command sudo sudo. 
Okay, this is the thing. Then we become the total. Again, exit. Again, it will become the EC2. Now, if I want to change to the NC value, sir, what we have to do? Simply switch user NC value. Press it. We are switching to the NC value. Sir. Now, to the NC value user switching, they are asking for the password. Which password do you have to write? The password you set it up for your Ansible account using the password command PAWSWD. That password you have to write it here. Password is correct, then they will log in it. And see, now you logged in, in as Ansible user. Okay. But the problem is if I do PWD here, so see, it is currently in the EC2 user location only. Okay. Now, do you know anybody remember that if you are creating the username with Ansible, okay. So by default, Ansible have the permission of which directory? If the username is Ansible, will he have the permission of slash home slash ec2 user directory? Anybody? No. no. So if I do ls, it is permission detected. So our final goal is it should ship to the slash home slash Ansible directory, right? Because Ansible user can do anything in the slash Ansible directory only. Similarly, John user can do it in the slash John directory only. So again, do exit, okay. And rather than writing the switch user and civil command, okay, write like this, switch user, dash and civil. Now, what will be the benefit of this dash? Press enter. Again, they're asking for the password, hit the password. But this time we will do the PWD. You are present in this slash home slash and civil. Okay. That means if you are using the switch user and civil, so you will be still present in the EC2 user directory only, but you will change to the Ansible user. So manually, you have to write the command cd slash home slash ansible, then you will jump to the ansible directory. But if you use the command switch user dash ansible directory, directly you will be logged in to the ansible user by default in this directory. And here you can run all the command ls everything. They will not say permission directory. Okay. So this thing you have to keep in mind. Every time when I'm saying you that you have to switch to the ansible user, which command will be preferring? Will be preferring switch user as ansible. Okay. and do the password okay and one more thing uh, let me exit it quickly let me show you that part also get it if i become the root user okay, like pseudo switch user root i am the root user from the root user if i want to become the ansible user and if i hit the command switch user dash ansible you'll see one interesting thing that they are not asking for password and they are shifted to the ansible user why because root is the admin, okay? So root can use any user. He can go at any point of time, right? So that's why as a root user, whenever you are hitting the command, switch user that Ansible, they are directly shifting you to the Ansible user without asking the password. So this thing also you can keep in mind. But from the EC2 user, whenever you write the command switch user that Ansible, you have to always give the password. But our final goal is that whatever the command, okay, Ansible, <laughs> My engineer want to run it, they will be running it as an Ansible user, not as EC2 user, not as a root. Okay. So this part is there. Similarly, you have to create this Ansible user in the node one also and in the node two also. So see, a screenshot becomes the orange color. Okay, that means it is running in the node one. Again, same command. First, you have to become the root user, then you have to add a user with the name Ansible. Again, set the password and again exit it. Try to check whether Ansible user is active or not. Similarly, do it for the node 12. Okay. So we don't have enough time for today, but what we can do is quickly, I will connect manually node 1 and node 2 uh, by directly from here. Okay. Directly from here, I am going to connect. But again, tomorrow when I will be showing you, I will be showing it using the putty only, where I will change the color also. Okay. But today, I just want to pick so some parts. So that's why I am doing it. Sir, good morning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Ram, sir. So while creating that uh, EC2 instance, uh, we are using by default VPC. In the real time, can we use that uh, create that VPC ID and uh, that any? Any required is there? Um, not required. So VPC will be going to learn. I said you that VPC part will be going to cover in the Terraform. That time VPC concept will be clear to you. Okay. Currently, till now you will be using the default VPC. Okay.
but i will tell you how to create bpc how to set it up everything okay bpc is nothing just bpc is just a lab so, but everything you can do okay in all the bpc there is nothing matter in company we use the default bpc also and we use the private basically not private basically is a custom bpc some people say it as a private bpc but again that private bpc is not the correct term okay correct term is the custom bpc that also we'll discuss in much more details like i said you know linux is not an operator sir, uh, sir what is the gate what is the net gate what is the gateway sir net gateway and uh, uh, that is uh, that's what i'm saying now currently we did not cover these all things right i will be covering that part in the terra form okay 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 so till now whatever you have doubt you can ask me this topics will take it so don't worry about it. okay not only the net gateway, we'll be covering the subnet, private subnet, public subnet, what is the difference between the internet gateway, when to use the net gateway. So these all things will be going to cover. So don't worry. Just focus on the current topic for okay, and zero. This is so complex thing. Okay. That's why if you mistake one step, everybody is going to ask sir, that I am not able to set up and zero. That's why I'm saying just focus step by step here. Any step will be missing. We'll be losing the entire Ansible setup. Okay. Today, and you'll see that tomorrow also the entire lecture will be just going to be over just to see whether our Ansible is working or not. Okay, Ansible setup cannot be completed in just a single hour. So yeah, we are logged in as a node one. First thing you have to become the root user. And here we don't have to install any Ansible or something, whatever we done. Okay, simply we have to create a user with the name Ansible, user add Ansible. And similarly, set a password. In my case, I'm going to save the exact same password, whatever I set in this. Even I will suggest to, in the starting, try to save the exact same password. Okay, but you can save the different password also, it doesn't matter. But I will suggest to, like in a starting, do the same username, do the same password. And again, giving that password to verify whether this user is created or not. Simply what you have to do, you have to again do exit, you will become the EC2 user. Simply use the command switch user as Ansible. Okay. And they are asking for the password, enter the password, you are logged in as an Ansible user. That means Ansible user is successfully created. Similarly, you have to do in the node 12. So let's close that machine. You have to do in the node 12. Again, node to connect it. Again, first you have to pick up the root user. Then you have to hit the command user add Ansible. Password Ansible. Again, I'm giving the exact same password. Okay, password is also set. Again, to verify quickly that. Sir, can user... you increase the font size, sir? It is not uh, not clearly the font. See, uh, I cannot increase the font size there, but we are using the same command huh, that we are doing it. Only I am hitting this to command user and password, nothing else. Okay, this thing I already said in the pattern. Whatever we done here, that's all. User add and password. Okay. Well, increase this entire size of the pages we do. Okay, let's see. Okay. User add. User we already created it. Right? User we already created. You have to simply do switch user as and see. That's it. You are asking for the password. With the password, if you are getting this Ansible at the rate, okay, that means your Ansible user is created. Okay, so simply you have to create the user. That's all. And that things we already learned in the Linux class. So exact same step. Let me again reduce the size. So basically we done this two command: user add password in the node one, user add password in the node two. And always you can always create the user as a root user. Okay, and to test it, just hit the command switch user as sensible. If you are able to log in, that means your user is created successfully. Okay. Now, once the user is created successfully in the ninth step, okay, and you are logged into the switch user data and see well. So, see again, this is the whitest method. That means you are in the master. Okay. 
in this master, we logged in as an Ansible user. Okay. Now, as an Ansible user, if you try to run here the command yum, I want to install a software called HTTPD. Okay. This is going to fail. Why? In a starting only, I said it. Run the software like yum or something. You should become the root user or you should have the root power user. And that's what they are saying that you need to be the root user to perform this. If you are not the root, you cannot perform this. So to use this, uh, basically our final goal is that if somebody is writing the command game install HTTPD, this should run. Okay, then only this sensible user have the some extraordinary permission so they can install the software, they can configure the software. But currently they are the normal user; they cannot do much. Okay, so they say if you don't have the permission, you can use the sudo command. Okay, before this, like sudo yum install HTTPD, and this will help you. Okay, to install the software. So let's use the sudo command. If I press enter, so see they are asking that we trust that you have received the usual lectures from the local system administrator. Okay, and you should always respect the privacy of other thing before you type with great power comes great responsibility. They are giving you some lecture, right? That you should not use the sudo power if you don't have the access to it. If I hit my password of my username Ansible, okay, I'll hit it enter. And see, they are clearly saying that whatever the user you are using currently, that is the Ansible user, is not in the sudoer files. That means there is a file in the Linux with the name of sudoer files. Okay. In that file, there were never mentioned about the Ansible, that they are going to give the root power to the Ansible user. Okay. And that's why this incident will be recorded. I will tell to the root user that somebody tried to access the sudo power. Okay. But they don't are in the it is something like this, you can think, like you don't have a key, but you are trying to break out any home. Okay. So exact same thing. In the sudo file, there is no mention of the Ansible user, but you are trying to use the sudo power. So you cannot do it. So to make sure how we can run the sudo command everything, okay, with as an Ansible user, we're going to cover tomorrow. After this ninth step, okay, from this, okay, need to perform, the root to this command they are saying okay and we done the command sudo yum install httpdy they are saying you are not in the sudo files so from the 10th step we are going to cover it tomorrow okay i will show you uh, so again one more day it will take. set up entire ansible so just wait for it and for once i will complete it then everybody will try to set up ansible. okay meanwhile you can revise this i will upload this lab files because so you can able to see it. is it okay Everybody. Up to here, any understanding problem at this point, whatever we done till now in the Ansible? See, we installed Ansible, we set up the password, everything, we set up the IP address, everything. Okay. Then we understood that we should not use the root user. So we created the user with the name Ansible in all the things. That is the only things we did. Till now, everything clear? I get some response. Any confusion? Anything is still. Okay, this file you want me to share it now? Okay, wait, just give me some. This is your drive, this is your lab folder. AWS user. Here I did not upload it. Just imagine. I'm uploading it now. It is uploaded. It is uploaded. Uh, you can check that and see well then. Okay. Go up to ninth step, tenth from tenth step. We are going to cover it tomorrow. Okay. So don't take the stress and Sybil is going to take time, but just try to understand why we are writing it, why we are writing the IP address, why yum is not working. Okay, why should give the root user root power? These all things you have to understand. Okay, currently we just added the IP address. Then we have to provide sir, the username. Sir, I have some confusion about that. Uh, we are uh, we are mentioned private IP now. Uh, actually, always we mentioned uh, public IP, but uh, here we mentioned private IP. 
See, not private IP, public IP. You can use any IP. Okay, so just think like that. Uh, there is a person, okay, uh, living in your neighborhood, okay? You want to tell him the address, okay, that how he can reach to your home. What will be the address way? Do you mention him in which country you are living? Do you mention him that in which states you are living? Do you mention him like in which city you are living? No, because that person is present in the same city, right? So you'll just see him the street address, your home number, that's all. He will come to you, right? But some person from different city want to visit you, okay? In that case, what you will be mentioning him? You will be mentioning him the city address, okay? You will be mentioning him the exact location, locality, everything. Then only you will be able to reach it. Similarly, some other person coming from outside of the country, okay? That time you have to mention the country also, state also, city also, then street address, everything. Okay? So exact same thing whenever we are using the PuTTY software. So where that PuTTY software is running? PuTTY software is running in your personal laptop. So in that case, you have to go through the public IP address. You are getting this point. Because you are present in your local laptop, EC2 instances are running in AWS cloud. So you have to reach there with the public IP. But our master, Ansible master is running where? It is also running in the AWS cloud. Our node one, node two, where they are running, they are also running it in the AWS cloud. So they can use the private IP, right? That is the difference between it. But you can use the public IP also. But public IP will be keep changing. You have to always update it. That's why I mentioned the private IP. Is it clear? Don't get confused. Uh, public IP, private IP. Public IP, also you can give it. But you have to always keep updating because public IP is going to change. That's why do the private IP. But yes, if our Ansible master is running on our local AWS, like if I have the Ubuntu here, okay, in this Ubuntu machine, I am running the Ansible. Then here I have to must have the use the public IP. Why? Because Ansible master is running my personal laptop. So they have to reach to the AWS cloud. So they can only use the public IP. But even Ansible master is running in the same AWS cloud. They can reach there using private IPLs. So this thing's just keep Okay, so let's discuss tomorrow. Okay, try to revise it till now. And whoever not completed AWS, please complete it. Thanks all of you.